Good evening, Internet. It is I, The Real Shroom. Tonight, I'm going to play another Pioneer League with a really nasty Demir Control Brew. Uh, we're going to gobble up our opponent's hopes and dreams with some Dinrova Tribal in Pioneer. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look. So when I first uh, came back from play to play ma Digital Magic after a long hiatus, uh, I played all the like Duels of the Planeswalkers uh, games, and I kind of fell in love with this card, Dinrova Horror. It's blue, black, and four generic for a 4-4 four, four creature. When an ETB is returned target permanent to its owner's hand, that player discards a card. Um, and this is an extremely powerful effect in a like discard-heavy strategy. What's so good about this? Uh, well, it's like tempo and removal all at once. One of the disadvantages of a card like Thoughtseize is that you know you can get your opponent empty-handed, and then your opponent like rips a powerful permanent. They put it onto the battlefield, while your Thoughtseize just rots in your hand and has nothing to do. Um, there's very powerful synergy between bounce effects and discard effects because you know in the case of a deck where you have bounce effects combined with your Thoughtseize, if they happen to resolve a troublesome permanent, no problem. You just bounce that permanent right back to their hand and then make them discard it with your Thoughtseize. And Dinrova is both of these effects wound up into one body which is also fairly substantial um, if your opponent is empty-handed this effect basically reads as destroy target permanent which is obviously extremely powerful while at the same time putting a 4-4 onto the battlefield so we are a discard heavy strategy that is trying to abuse effects like this that combine uh bounce and discard in one piece uh for tempo and uh and control play so, of course, we are a very discard-heavy deck. we got to be to to really make these uh, effects pay off. So we got our four of Thoughtseize. We're playing a total of four, um, like, Mind Rot effects, three Go Blanks. This is just, like, the best Mind Rot ever, pretty much, because it also exiles the graveyard. I'm trying out a Skull Raid. I've always wanted to try this card. Um, it seems like it might be good in this deck. For two mana, you can foretell it. It's, for, it's a four mana Mind Rot. If fewer than two cards were discarded this way, you draw cards equal to the difference. You can also foretell it. So you can foretell it for two, and then later play it as a two mana Mind Rot, uh, where if they only have one card in hand, they instead discard that card, and you draw a card. Or if they're empty-handed, it's a two mana, you know, Divination, which isn't bad. It's nice to be able to turn your mind rots into card draw uh, in situations where your opponent is already empty handed. So I've always wanted to try this card. Gonna try it tonight. Um, also, we are running one Aklazots, who is a discard piece as well as a big finisher that can close out the game really fast. Also, a lifelink piece that can um, gain us some life in games where we've gotten behind, which we may very well do since we're a control deck. And it is a card draw piece as well. If our opponent's empty-handed and they can't discard to Aklazots' uh, trigger, we instead draw a card, which is fantastic. Um, so, what are the Dinrova effects that we're packing? Well, maybe the best one... Also, since we're a very discard-heavy deck, of course we're playing some Waste Knot. We got a 3 of Waste Knot that, when our opponents discard cards, can either give us zombies, which is really great, as we're about to see, that synergizes extremely well with our deck, can give us 2 black mana, which is probably the least powerful of these effects, but it can be useful in some situations, or can just draw us cards, which is fantastic. We love drawing cards. That's a good thing to do in Magic. Uh, probably the most powerful of our Dinrova effects is Compelling Deterrence. This is another card that was on uh, one version of Duels of the Planeswalkers that I also at the time thought was really cool. It's a two mana, one in a blue for an instant return target, non line permanent to its owner's hand. That player discards a card if you control a zombie. So it's a two mana instant speed Dinrova activation if we control a zombie which is the best one of these that we have in our deck. So that's why we want we're playing some zombies because we want to uh, really capitalize. We're playing a full set of the compelling deterrence. We want to really capitalize on this two mana Dinrova effect. So we are playing some zombies. We're playing three of Shambling Ghast, which is just a good one drop zombie. Um, it can make us a treasure when it dies, or it can kill something that has two toughness. Um, you know, uh, attackers don't want to attack into this if they will die to the minus one, minus one trigger. So it's a good one drop zombie. Um, we're also playing t uh, three of Lazotep Reapers. This is basically just a two drop that creates two zombies when it enters the battlefield. You know, we're not likely to win the game by beating down with the zombies. They're really just there to uh, empower our compelling deterrence. If we don't happen to have any zombies on the battlefield, like, it's not great. There's still a good synergy between bounce and discard, as we discussed earlier. But really, we want the zombies on the battlefield so that we can get the full Dinrova activation effect. And the other major Dinrova piece that we have is Ashiok Nightmare Muse. I just I really like this Planeswalker. 
Uh, the plus one creates two, three attackers that, and blockers that can close out the game for us. The minus three return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. That player exiles a card from their hand. So it doesn't trigger our waste knot, unfortunately, because it's an exile, not a discard. But still, it's a repeatable Dinrova activation, where again, if our opponent is empty-handed, which hopefully they will be with all of our Mind Rots, Thought Seizes, and Liliana of the Veil, which we're running two of in the main, uh, this is just, just exile target permanent. Non-land permanent in the case of, of uh, Ashiok. Uh, we only have the one of Dinrova because it is a clunky six drop, and like it's kind of hard to to like play multiples of these in Pioneer, which is a pretty fast format. And then we've got some removal, of course. Uh, we got the full playset of Fatal Push. We've got um, Liliana's, of course, can minus two uh, edict our opponents and compelling deterrence. All of our Dinrova effects are just uh, removal pieces, which can target any permanent. So. That's great. And we're running a one of Spellscorn's Coven, which is kind of like a, a a Dinrova in two halves. The three mana, the adventure side is the three mana instant return target spell to its owner's hand. So it's a good tempo play, you know, like instead of um, it can like catch something on the stack. It's really the only way we have of interacting on the stack with our opponents. We're not running any counter spells whatsoever. And then uh, the other side of it is a four mana, two, three flyer that makes our opponent discard a card when it ETBs. So... On the adventure side, it catches a spell, retains that spell in our opponent's hand. On the creature side, it makes them discard that spell that we countered with it, um, thus completing a Dinrova activation. So that is the plan. We're going to gobble up our opponent's stuff. They may think they're getting away with it by like resolving permanents and, and creatures and stuff, but all those permanents are going to die. Everything eventually is going to get discarded or bounced back to their hand and then discarded by all of our Dinrova effects. Uh, there's a total of 25 lands in the deck. Uh, the tech includes an Otawara and a Takanuma, a Castle Lockdwain for a little extra card draw, three Field of Ruins because we're a two, uh, two-color deck. We can support this. We've got plenty of basics to get our colors going. And we have a one of, uh, a two of, excuse me, Restless Reef. Um, the sideboard includes a couple of Torpor Orbs because since we are playing bounce effects, if there are creatures that have especially powerful bounce effects, that means that our opponent gets to replay them and get those effects again, which we don't want. So we want a, a couple of this uh, effect in our sideboard. It hurts us a little bit. It means that our Lazatap Reapers don't amass and that our Spell Scorn's Coven doesn't make our opponents discard. So we might board those out when we bring in the Torpor Orbs. But I think it's a good idea to have a piece like this uh, given our strategy. A couple of Pithy Needles that are good versatile pieces that can target lots of stuff. Planeswalkers Artifacts. Uh, we're running a three of Witch's Vengeance as a sweeper that's targeted. You know, you can name like humans, spirits. Um, I think Witch's Vengeance is a good sweeper to run in a deck like this that has creatures you don't want to kill. We don't want to kill our zombies because we want to be able to have our compelling deterrences act as Dinrova effects. Uh, but we do want to be able to kill our opponent's stuff. And I think Witch's Vengeance is good. A lot of the decks, even like mono red decks, are usually like wizard tribal decks. So you name wizards and um, you wipe their board while keeping our board intact. Third Liliana the Veil is good there for matches where it's good, like Control, for instance. I'm trying a two of Gifted Aetherborn for play against the aggro decks. Um, you know, two, three Death Touch Lifelink is a great blocker. Um, and so long as they don't have some kind of indestructible effect on their dudes, like, uh, you know, giving their guys Hexproof with with spells isn't going to prevent them from dying to a block from the Gifted Aetherborn. The Gifted Aetherborn will also gain us a couple of life as it blocks, you know, like a Soul Scar Mage or Monastery Swift Spear. Or a Kamano. A couple of duresses to make a total of six uh, Thoughtseize-ish effects against control. And a couple of Narsets uh, against matchups where opponents want to draw cards. One Ashiok is an additional graveyard piece to go with our three uh, Go Blanks. As well as a piece that can prevent our opponent from searching their library. It can be good against like Bring to Light decks, which are quite popular right now. Although hopefully they won't even get to play those Bring to Lights because we'll make them discard them all before they get a chance to. Um, I forgot to mention, there is one other sort of discard pe uh, Dinrova piece. Uh, it's hiding behind my preview pane here. These two of Discovery Dispersal. Um, I don't think this card is very good, but it belongs in the deck because Dispersal is a 5 mana instant speed Dinrova. It's not a full Dinrova because it doesn't choose. We don't get to choose what we're targeting with it, but it is going to be uh, the, the thing, the non-land permanent, with the highest mana value, so it's going to get their best thing. And uh, Discover also is not a very good like card selection card, but it's better than nothing. It's thematic, uh, so I figure it belongs in the deck. 
and I am playing a two of because we want a little bit of card selection. Speaking of which, we also are playing a one of Memory Deluge, which is just one of the best like card selection pieces you can play. It's like two card draw spells in one, extremely powerful. If you ever played in like Standard or Pioneer or whatever, you know how good this is in control decks. So that is the plan. We're going to gobble up our opponent's hopes and dreams, their battlefields, their hands, their graveyards. Uh, we're just going to bounce it all back to their hands, make them discard it, kill it if it hits the battlefield. We're going to trigger our waste knots, get a bunch of zombies so we can din rover them some more. And we're just going to nullify, negate everything they do, undo everything they do, kill them with our with our beats, uh, you know, our zombies, our din rovas, our nightmare tokens, Aklazots and our Restless Reefs. That's the plan. Let's see if we can execute it in a very vicious Pioneer metagame. Uh, and let's get into a league. If you like off-meta, off kilter MTG content, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below to help out my channel. It really helps. All right. Match number one will be on the play against Yutokun. Um... This is a one lander with no black source. Uh, if we draw black, like on turn two, it's good. If we don't, it's terrible though. I think we gotta mull that. All right, this is more reasonable. We've got a reaver. We've got compelling deterrence to turn it into a din rova. So this will keep. Our opponent also mulled, which is good news for us. What do we bottom here? The Coven? The Coven is a discard piece. I think I'll bottom Field of Ruin. We'll draw lands. There's 25 lands in our deck. Leyline of the Guild Pack begins on the battlefield. Okay. So we'll lead on a tap land. So they're probably mono green devotion. Yep. I could just bounce their ley line, which isn't a bad play. Of course, I'd rather Din Rova it. If they go Nykthos, they can already tap it Nykthos for five mana. I think that's a little too risky. I don't think I can wait a turn to play the Reaver and then Compelling Deterrence. Oh man, I would love to wait. Because Leyline of the Guild Pack, that's just going to languish in their hand for a while. Like, can they even actually cast it? Yeah, you can always use green for those hybrid symbols. Uh, man. The greedy play is definitely to play the Reaver here, but I think this, the safe play is to just bounce the Leyline. It's just too disastrous if they have a Nykthos. That's some high-tech stuff, my opponent says. It is indeed. They reveal an old-growth troll. There's a waste knot. So it turns out that um I could have I could have waited to bounce, which would have been great. I think I'll Liliana an edict just hope that well they're gonna have the troll because they can untap a land with Kiora.
but I think that's okay. We'll kill the elf. Slow him down as much as possible. All right, there's a ghast. Let's waste not. Let's plus Lily. We'll discard our Lazotep Reaver. Yeah, I think so. Let's see what we get out of it. I think this spell... I have a feeling this coven might be important. Okay, they discarded a Kiora. So we get to draw a card. Land is... good. Play that on black. We're mostly a black deck. Play Shambling Ghast. Say go. We're gonna lose our Lily, that's okay. We'll absorb a hit from the old growth troll. Yep, Lily dies. Another troll. Yep, that's the thing about mono green devotion is like, <laughs> even if you shut down their their big mana shenanigans, they just have beaters. They have giant beaters. It's still a very good deck. It's not as played as it was, but um, it's still very powerful. Okay. Otawara. Well, this draw is not panning out well at all. Um, do I want to play the Otawara or do I want to hold on to it? I kind of want to hold on to it. I think what I'm going to do is just pass, get beat down a whole lot. Hold up my take it back. Open World Oddity. We get hit for a bunch. Another Liliana. Alright, let's Liliana.
Minus. Make you sack a troll. Yep. Mm, still gonna hold Otawara, I think. They have five cards in our hand in their hand. We haven't found any Thoughtseize, we haven't found any mind rots. Pelucranos. All right, Lily's absorbing some hits, at least. That's good news. All right, there's a compelling deterrence. We'll play our Otawara. Uh, I guess we'll wait. We're going to lose this game. <laughs> We're just too far behind. Open walled oddity. All right, let's bounce Pelucranos because it's not hasty. The oddity makes it all their stuff hasty, though. Let's see what we get off our Waste Knot. Probably going to discard a land so we get mana. Yep. Oh, they discarded what now? Kiora. Uh, we'll take eight. All right. Well, that was a mulligan and very poor running. But what do we have against them? Another Liliana. Gifted Aetherborn actually seems pretty good. Narset keeps their cure from drawing cards. Pithy Needle keeps it from untapping their lands. Fatal Push is good. I think Thoughtseize is good. The Deterrence is good. Cut Skull Raid. Coven, a little slow. Cut one Ashiok, one Reaver. Deluge. Do I really want the Pithy Needle for Kiora? I probably do. They always find it off there, like, eventually. Cut a Reaver and a Ghast. Rely on our Waste Knots to make zombies for us. And... One fatal push. He's a vampire, not a zombie, unfortunately. I think we'll keep, though. 
I don't know, maybe this is a bad keep. It probably is a bad keep because we don't have anything that's like really disruptive against them. There's the elf. Compelling deterrence. We don't have any zombies, unfortunately. Still, it could be good. Hostile, hostile. Outcast Trailblazer. Reveals Cavalier of Thorns. All right, we draw Discover Dispersal. Let's attack with our Aetherborn. Let's Lily Edict them. Give rid of their Elf. They only have one green source. Nykthos is producing... is netting zero mana. Alright, so they plotted this. Another compelling deterrence. Let's start with Discover. See if we can find a Waste Knot. Go blank, Shipwreck Marsh. We can graveyard that, but I'll keep a go blank. Then let's plus. I'll discard my blue source. Black money is much more important. They have an obstinate Bailoth, okay. Stay back to block. There's the Trailblazer. There's a Cavalier. Yep, they're just going off here. Man, we needed like a thought seize. Ugh. We'll see. It's looking grim. Reveals five cards. So they put down a uh, layer.
Going after the invasion? Well, I'm gonna block. Um, I could bounce my gifted Aetherborn, but I'm not going to. I'll just trade with the Bayloth, that's fine. Do I want to bounce any of their stuff? I think I'll bounce their Cavalier of Thorns. Another Lily. Let's minus two. I think we'll go blank. This will empty their graveyard. Then if they play the Cavalier, I can minus my second Lily. And they won't get any value off it dying. They have two different creature lands, which is annoying. Alright, Field of Ruin is helpful. Edict you. Oh, they put all that stuff in their graveyard with the Cavalier. Oops. Well, let's see what they get. They just got lands in an Oath of Nyssa. So what did they choose? Oath of Nyssa, okay. Well, we've got another deterrence. Can't bounce lands, unfortunately. There's an old growth troll. There's Nyctos. Storm the festival. Gets an obstinate Bailoff. They have a Nykthos in their hand. All right, uh, I don't want to bounce anything right now. Thoughtseize. All right, let's bounce the troll. Uh, I boarded out zombies, unfortunately. creeping in. So I think what I'll do is I'll get rid get rid of the lair. 
I have a swamp. They have a Nyctos in hand, which I can't thought see, so there's no point in destroying it. Let's Thoughtseize. Troll, Leyline, Nykthos. Well, we take the troll, that's easy. Plus. To storm the festival search, though it just looks at. They can still storm the festival, so we're still in really bad shape. So waste not decks play uh, extinction event as a as a sweeper, which I see why. I think this this deck could use some extinction event. Here's the flashback storm. Gets a troll. And an invasion of Ixalan. Which reveals a troll. They kill Iliana. Waste not. A little late to the party. Now they're going to get to flip these. They're going to get to flip these invasions, and it's going to snowball from here. So we're probably dead. If they even bother attacking the invasions, I'm sure they'll attack at least one. Do they attack both? I think they attack both, actually. There's a troll. We draw a fatal push. Uh, let's see what miraculous draw we can get off our castle Lockthwing. An island. So we're taking lethal damage here. Okay. Yeah, I think we need extinction events. <laughs> Lesson, the moral of this game. I mean, the mono green devotion isn't widely played, but uh, it kind of got crushed there. Round one. Round two, we're against Affinity for Planes. The mono white. And hey, we've got a good draw. We'll keep this. We got a zombie. We got a Thoughtseize. Got a Dinrova for later. Light of hands are they um Lotus Field? 
Let's thought seize. Oh, they're they're just a uh, phoenix, of course. Prof's eidetic memory. All right, let's just play our land tapped. Play Shambling Ghast. They don't kill our ghast. Alright, another watery grave. Let's attack. I don't want to play Lily until they've got a phoenix on the battlefields, probably. Or until I can make them... Oh, they can only target creatures with their stuff. Maybe I should have played Lillian Plus. Oh well, too late now. Of course they just discard their Phoenix. Okay, they just play a Phoenix. So they had two Fiery Impulse, right? Plus a Lightning Axe. I don't know what, did I accidentally close one out? Okay. So let's play Restless Reef. Let's Lily Minus. Oh, I should have played an untapped land. So that way if on their turn... If on their turn they kill my Ghast or Lily, I could Fatal Push the Phoenix. That was, that was dumb. Free the Fey, chooses Opt, Opt. Here comes the Phoenix, yep. If I had an untapped land, I could fatal push the Phoenix right now. Big mistake. Big mistake. Boo. I should have my Lily still. That sucks. Problem is, they're just going to treasure cruise. So unless I draw like a Thoughtseize or something, they just get to draw three cards at will. There's a Profs. Okay. Well. Let's trigger revolt. Kill the Phoenix. They play their fairy. Memory deluge. So I could Dinrova.
Dinrova the Profs. Dinrova is really best for when they're empty handed. I think I'd rather just Memory Deluge here. Try to find a Waste Knot, a Thought Seize. Go blank. There we go. Go blank and Skull Raid. So let's foretell the Skull Raid. All right, we can actually get them empty handed. There's another free the face, sure. We can get them empty handed and exile their graveyard. Slide of hand. How many phoenixes do they have in their graveyard? Only one so far. That's good. Treasure cruise. Never mind. And we're on a two-turn clock. Lazotep Reaver. Well, we just lose two treasure crews, basically. We were in a position where we could get them empty and make them and exile their graveyard. Now we can't do anything. Now we're going to lose. Uh, I wonder if I even reveal what we're up to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I die in two turns just from their cre from their attacks. Actually, I probably die on their turn. I die I die on their turn because they're going to be able to add a counter to something with profs. I can make them discard four cards, but they're Phoenix. Like they're going to have an Optor consider, or of another Picklock prankster. So we're dead here. So let's go with Narset. Let's go with. Ashiok. Let's go with Duress. What's bad? I think we learned that it's... We can't really afford to shave too many zombies. I could shave maybe one zombie. Do I want Liliana number three? I think I do. Cut the Coven... Poor Dinrova gets the cut every time. Cut a Discovery Dispersal. Cut a Waste Knot. A lot of their damage spells can only hit creatures, so Liliana's good. That's another problem with our zombie plan. Fatal Push needs Revolt to kill a Phoenix. Maybe I'll cut one Fatal Push. Mm, that's two colorless lands. Gotta mull that. Alright, we got a Zombie. We got a Compelling Deterrence. We got Narset. Theoretically a good draw. Let's go Swamp, Lazotep, Reaver.
No cantrip, that's good. They just play a tap steam vent, okay. Let's get in. Let's play Narset. They have a spell pierce. Yep, we really wanted a, count, a, a discard spell for that. Hard to not go for it though. Ledger Shredder, we can Fatal Push. Liliana. Not bad. Let's edict you. Free the Fae. Consider they don't yet have a phoenix in their graveyard, but that will probably change right here. Treasure Cruise. And that's the card that just beats us on its own without Narset. Okay. Let's just attack. I guess I'm discarding the land. Three mana is sufficient for what's in our hand currently. They have a phoenix. All right, we have some compelling deterrence for that phoenix. They discard the phoenix. Waste not. Boy, I would love to waste not before go blanking. I also don't really want to plus Liliana. Ugh. So I waste knots. They definitely get their Phoenix back. They possibly treasure cruise again. Or uh nah, I can't. I gotta just go blank now. Discard Fatal Push. I should have. That's so dumb. I should have plus Lily first. Oh, man. They gave them an extra card in their graveyard. 
Okay, all they got is the one three fairy. Another one on the way. Ashiok. Let's Ashiok. They counter. Boy, am I really discarding Waste Knot? Am I really going to do that? I could minus kill the fairy. I think that's a better play. Minus kill the fairy. Get in some more get in some more damage. Now if they just have treasure cruise here, it's GG. Crackling Drake. Is good. Lazotep Reaver is not quite so good. Let's waste not. Plus. Get a zombie. So they could play their fairy and attack me with their Crackling Drake. They have another one of those. They have a Phoenix in their graveyard. And that's game. So we lose to Treasure Cruise. What? It stops our stuff too. But we don't really have that much stuff. We can just board out. The Dinrova. Nah, I actually think I like Narset better than Torpor Orb. Because it does let us draw cards. Now, last time we played Mono Green, we, we learned not to board out too many zombies. Coven. I don't know. Ashiok is probably better than Aklazots. 161. Zero Lander. Um, I guess we'll keep this. We'll bottom. 
Boy, we probably really need like all these cards. Bottom discovery dispersal and just hope that our deck treats us kindly. We'll need to find land the first couple of turns. We have to lead on a tap land too. Do they have the ley line? Yep. Okay, they have no turn one play. That's good. So I think I'll just... Play Needle on Kiora, I guess. Okay, no turn two play, that's good. Ugh, drowning the catacomb is awkward as heck. I think I play it. Just hold my compelling deterrence. Kiora. Cannot untap their lands. All right, let's bounce the ley line. Let's play Narset. Linus. Grab a go blank. So Kiora is totally shut down. They replay a Leyline. Minus Narset. Let's get a Thought Seize. Thought Seize you. Invasion of Ixalan and a bunch of lands. Go blank you. They do have a besage you in their hand. They have two besage use. Yeah, I didn't play around the Hydra, that sucks. But they don't they don't have anything to draw off Kiara anyway. Okay. Now we're in good shape. Go blank you. They besage you the pithing needle. Sure, we'll untap the watery grave. All right, they are ready to be Din Rovid, and we've got an Ashiok. Another ley line. So when they find their Nykthos, it's infinite mana. But we do have a field ruin.
think we'll play Ashiok. Make a token. I don't want to Din Rover because they can just immediately kill the Ashiok. All right, they draw land. That's good. They're going to fire up a huge lair. I will block. Another field of ruin. Perfect. All right. Now we can din rover their Kiora. Storm the festival, huh? See what they hit? An outlaw and a troll. Wow, that's so good. That was some gas that they hit right there. Okay. But... Let's thought seize you. Plush the Ashiok. Play Liliana. Minus. They sack their troll, that's fine. Troll can't attack next turn. Another storm the festival. I think I'm gonna draw a million cards. What? They got double outcast trailblazer. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. They got Cavalier plus Outlast Trailblazer. Jeez. Well, it's kind of my fault, because I did have the Narset, but uh, I probably should not have minused it the second time. They have 16 mana. They flash it back. All right. GG's. All right, I'll keep playing. We'll see what they get here. I had a chance. I definitely had a chance there. Maybe it would have been better to not... Minus the Narset at all, or at least not more than once. I think that was a mistake. Because if we had Narset now, this wouldn't be that big a deal. I mean, it's still horrible, but... They got the Oddity now. Yeah, we can concede. They have eight cards in hand. Sure. GG's. All right, well, we had a chance there. 
I think uh, that was a critical error, letting uh, making us lose our Narset. But with Storm the Festival, like they can just hit it, and it's going to be tremendous. And again, we need Extinction Event. Game four will be on the play against Chew Roads. Um, we've got a zombie and a compelling deterrent, so I think we keep. Uh, if, if I brought in Torpor Orb instead of Narset in that last match, that would have shut down those, uh, outcasts. So I guess it was wrong to... I guess I should have brought in Torpor Orb instead of Narset. Okay. Let's get our Shambling Ghast. Merfolk. Reveals Mana Confluence, so it's a Malia combo. Let's thought seize. Deep Cavern Bat, Amalia, Extraction Specialist, Sentinel. I think I actually want to take the bat because I can deal with the other stuff if I don't get my hand disrupted. Let's go ahead and attack. They're not going to block. It'd be really bad for us if they did, but they're not going to. Okay, we'll play this on blue. There's Amalia. Um, I think... I want to foretell my Skull Raid. Hold up Fatal Push. Extraction Specialist going to get back our bat. Their bat, rather. Uh, it ETBs right now. So I guess we got to fatal push it. So they got to look at our hand.
Um, not gonna block. I could have blocked and killed Amalia. Okay. Draw an island. Let's see, I could go blank, they go to two card, they go to one card, up to two. Hopefully not die. On the following turn, I could compelling deterrence skull raid. Or I could compelling deterrence here. Hmm, it's tough. Yeah, I don't need the extra discard off the compelling deterrence, right? So I think I will just go blank you. They discard Mana Confluence and Sentinel, so they have one unknown card in their hand. Wild Growth Walker. Um, so, this is game, right? Do I just lose? I might just lose here. We'll see. Yield through this turn. So they're gaining life exploring, gaining life exploring. Eventually, though, Amalia's gonna wipe the whole board, right? And they've already passed their combat step. Oh, they're also drawing lands. Yeah, they're drawing lands with their explorers. Okay. So I messed up. We'll see. We'll see what I draw here. I needed to kill the Amalia. Okay, so she is going to wipe their, their board. They have five cards in hand. So I need like a Thought Seize. I didn't draw Thought Seize. They have an Ether Flux Reservoir. On top of their library? I mean, we're gonna lose no matter where it is if they have it, so.
Yep, I needed to draw. I needed to uh, deal with Amalia before the Wild Growth Walker hit. All right, Bouncer. Pay three life. And they have the reservoir. So we want what? Torpor orb? Liliana could be good. Pithy Needle can name Ether Flux Reservoir, I guess. Dinrova Lazotep Spell Scorn since I'm boarding in Torpor Orb. On Waste Knot. Um, Skull Raid? Alright, we've got a Zombie and Compelling Deterrence in Thoughtseize, so that's good. Play a Zombie. Selfless Savior, doesn't really matter. Let's Thought Seize. Wild Growth Walker, Sentinel, Vivian, Return to the Ranks. I think I'll take the Sentinel. They can't get it back with Return to the Ranks. Yep. They don't attack with the dog. All right, I'll play my Lazotep Reaper. Reaver, that is, rather. My one, two, shutting them down. All right, let's play another black source. Hold up my compelling deterrence. Even interrupter. That's fine. They attack with the two two. Do I want a compelling deterrence something? Convoke. Mana value two or less. I can do the 
interrupter, I guess. Then they can actually cast it in response to my go blank. I feel like I should do something. Let's see what I draw. Another land. We'll just pass. They don't attack with their 2-2. Two -two. They're holding up something. Sure, let's just do this on their Wild Growth Walker. Here comes the Convoke. Court of Calling, X equals 2 for Amalia. Okay. Oh, for Prosperous Innkeeper. All right. They discard Return to the Ranks. All right, I would love to draw Thoughtseize. Thank you. Thoughtseize. Go blank. Okay, let's get some Dinrovas. Let's get some Dinro Dinrova effects. We have nothing in hand as well, so it's not like we're sitting pretty. Aklazots? Liliana. Well, Liliana can kill something, or I can just make them discard their last card. That seems pretty good too. Attacking my face. Compelling deterrence would be a good draw. More lands. Make you discard. Collected company. Uh, where's my torpor orbs? Where are my torpor orbs? That's a pretty good hit. Skyclave Apparition and Amalia.
More lands. Well, if we just keep drilling lands, we, we don't have a chance. Deep Cavern Bat. Just more lands. Dina. So we're dead next turn. Oh, no, we're dead right now. We go to one, I think. Yeah. So what do we draw to come back from this? More lands. All right. Well, we blew it game one. We had a chance to disrupt the combo and we didn't. Game two, we kind of flooded out at the end there. And I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about the deck in my final thoughts. Final matches against Golden Horn Call will be on the draw. Opponent moles to six. We'll keep seven. That's a nice looking seven. We don't have a zombie for our compelling deterrent, but we have discard spells. We get thought seized. Takes one of my thought seizes. So is this Rakdos Vampires? Let's find out. Yep, Thought Seize, Fable, Bitter Triumph. Well, we'll take Fable. No brainer there. Takes one of our fatal pushes. They don't play a land. Alright, let's waste not. Alright, their hand is bitter triumph plus two unknown.
Discovery Dispersal. Let's discover... Yeah, I like both those cards. Let's top, top. Conceal our go blank from a Thoughtseize. We draw go blank. So sure, let's go blank you. They scoot. Okay. <laughs> uh cool. So Rakdos. We want duress. We want pithy needle. We can lose Coven, one Gast, Dinrova. I think we've cut Dinrova every single match we've played, or close to it. And just bring in one Duress, that's fine. Cool. Waste not duress thought sees. I like it. Thought sees. Takes waste not. Fatal push is a good draw. Let's thought sees. Harvester, Go Blank, Archfiend. Pretty busted hand, honestly. I think I'll take the Harvester because I can. I can duress the go blank before they can cast it. Misery's shadow. Compelling deterrence. Well, let's duress you. Take go blank, so their hand is Fatal Push, Archfiend. Let them spend all their mana. Liliana. Ooh, that's good. Play this on blue. Play Lily. Plus, discard Watery Grave. They discard Fatal Push, so Archfiend plus Unknown. They scoop. All right, we beat Rakdos. I never beat Rakdos. Wow. Okay. So, 
our final result of this league with Dinrova Tribal was a 1-4. And there's a problem with this deck. There's a few problems. The biggest problem, I think, is it's trying to be two decks at once. It's trying to be a Waste Knot deck, which is just totally focused on leveraging Waste Knot with removal. Uh, you know, Waste Knot with discard and removal. It's running, you know, six main board, one mana discard spells. Running all the go blanks, Liliana's. Plus, like, the rest of the deck is just removal, and it wins the game with Waste Knot, plus, like, some Shieldreds. Um, that's a very different deck than this. Um, the Dinrova strategy, the strength of Dinrova as compared to Waste Knot, is that a Dinrova effect is like a built in two for one. Uh, because, you know, it bounces something. Hope, uh, if you're actually playing Dinrova, or if you have an Ashiok on the Nightmare, uh, a Nightmare Muse on the battlefield, you bounce something, make someone discard, but you get to retain the permanent that you're using, Din Robo Horror or uh, Ashiok Nightmare Muse. Um, so I think Waste Knot is just a different deck. Um, I think you could add blue to a Waste Knot deck in order to take advantage of Compelling Deterrence, which I think is a very, very good card uh, and could be good in that deck also because... Your removal is like Shieldred's Edicts, Fatal Pushes, that kind of thing. There are certain um, card types that it can't interact with, like Artifacts, Enchantments in particular. You know, you can't waste not... If you if an opponent manages to stick one of those, there's really not much you can do about it. But uh, with Compelling Deterrence, you can. And Waste Not is going to have Zombies, um, you know, because it plays four Waste Not. Um, so I think that is a possible... Th different deck you can build than what I have here. Um, the other possibility w would be like a true all-in Dinrova effect uh, uh, deck, which would, it would lean more on the zombies. And there's a sorcery card. It's Demir Sorcery. Uh, I forget what it's called. I'll post the name of it uh, as text here in my video. But it's a two-mana Demir Sorcery that if you have eight permanents, it's like Descend 8, it can bounce something, it can make an opponent discard, or it can like do a uh, like a, an anticipate. But if you have eight permanents in your graveyard, you can do all three of those things. And it only costs two mana, and it's a sorcery. So I think you could build a deck that's just all in on the Dinrova effects. Uh, so instead of like going with Waste Nod and like removal, we have a lot of like, you know, we've got our Fatal Pushes, whatever. Just a deck that all it does is try to do Dinrova effects. So you'd have more zombies, you'd have like Stitcher Suppliers because you want to mill yourself, and you'd ha have enough zombies to make sure that you always can turn on your compelling deterrence. And you'd have that card, and uh, coupled with the compelling deterrence, probably you'd have like the full playset of Ashioks, you'd probably have 26 to 28 lands, and like actual Dinrova horrors. So like that deck would be a true Dinrova tribal deck. Uh, which is just all about bouncing stuff, making people discard. Bouncing stuff, making people discard. You would still want the Mind Rots, uh, because the deck does want... It really does want to empty its opponent's hand quickly, uh, as quickly as possible. So you want the Mind Rots in that build as well. But th you could build a deck that was much more focused on that Dinrova effect than this is. And this deck is hurt by the fact that it's trying to mash those two archetypes together, and neither one is really working very well. Or when one part of that when one of those strategies would be good uh, i'm drawing cards for the other strategy and so it doesn't really work so i might try to build one of those decks um in a future stream either a demir waste not deck trying to leverage compelling deterrence or a true all-in dinrova tribal effect so that is the first major comment i would make about this um the way this deck is built uh, it needs more card draw because it needs to be able to find the appropriate pieces. Uh, we had trouble with like getting mana screwed, not finding the cards we needed. Um, I think we got we 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 got we went zero and eight our first four matches. We did win a match against Rakdos, which was sweet at the very end. Um, we got close in a couple of games against Phoenix, like Treasure Cruise. Uh, in that second game, they just got off a of Treasure Cruise, and once that happens, like we basically can't win. Uh, and against in the second matchup against um, Mono Green as well, Mono Green, we let our Narset die when we didn't have to. And the real backbreaking play was that Storm the Festival that brought in those outcasts and drew our opponent like 
a handful of cards. And once that happened, our deck has no chance. And against uh, Amalia combo in game one, we had a chance to disrupt the combo, but I made a misplay. I didn't deal with Amalia when I had the chance to, and um, they proceeded to go off on their very next turn. So in some of those matches, like we, we did lose all eight games, but we were it's not like we got utterly destroyed in each one of those games. We came very close in at least three of those games. So, you know, even as badly built as the deck is and as like sort of incoherent as it is, it's not terrible. Like, you know, Demir has good interaction. There's powerful spells in the deck. Thoughtseize is a powerful spell. Fatal Push is a powerful spell. Liliana Veil is a powerful spell. So it could get some wins as is, but it would be much better if it were focused more in one of the two archetypes, as I mentioned previously. And the sideboard needs some work for sure. Uh, I think if you look at the Pioneer metagame, Waste Not runs um, Extinction Event as its sweeper of choice, and I think that's a good way to go. There probably should be one in the main board, and there certainly should be some in the sideboard. Uh, at least one of these witches vengeances could be replaced by one or more uh, extinction events. So that's the main thing I would do as far as the sideboard goes. Actually, I really like the idea of gifted Aetherborn as a sideboard card against uh, aggressive decks. I think that's actually solid. Uh, combined with like four fatal push that we have in the main board, we never got to play against aggro like a uh, mono red, but I think that's actually would be that actually is a very good sideboard option against them. Um, I could see even going up to a third Torpor Orb because the deck does do so much bouncing. And just like ETB effects are, are just extremely powerful in pretty much every format of Magic the Gathering. So um, since we don't worry about having our ETBs shut down too much, I think hating out ETBs is a very good strategy in a lot of matchups in many formats. Um, in particular in a deck like this that bounces a lot, you want that piece. I could see adding a third. Other than that, I think the graveyards, the uh, the sideboard is pretty much fine. So those are my thoughts on the deck. It's two decks masquerading as one. Really should choose to be one or the other. Uh, in a future stream, I may uh, try to play one of those two decks, either Demir Waste Not or Trujan Rova Hot Horror. Probably Trujan Rova Horror sounds more fun to me because, uh, you know, this deck comes out of a, a sense of nostalgia for the card. And the effect and um, you know i'm a jank aficionado as it says on my youtube channel so that sounds janky and fun but anyway we'll hold our head up high after our one four this time around next time we'll do better and i had fun so that's really the key thing about playing magic i think uh that's gonna do it for tonight though if you like uh i hope you enjoyed if you like off meta off kilter mtg content please be sure to like the video subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below it really helps out a lot hope to see you in the next mtg stream have a good night.